But alas, I mustn't tell you, it wouldn't be right. Why not, my boy? It's only 11.56, and you're one of us until the clock strikes 12. True, and until then you're bound to protect our interests. Aye. Very well, then. It is my duty as a pirate to tell you that you are too tender-hearted. For instance, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves. And when you attack a stronger one, you invariably get thrashed. Oh, what? There's some truth in that. Then again, you make it a point of never molesting an orphan. Of course, we're all orphans ourselves, and we know what it is like. Yes, but it has gone about, and what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. <laughs> the last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans. One would think Great Britain's mercantile fleet was recruited solely from her orphan asylums, which we know is not the case. But Frederick, you wouldn't have it absolutely merciless, would you? Ah, oh, well there's my difficulty. Until 12 o'clock I would. After 12 I wouldn't. Oh, was ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? All right, I think so. Everything dangerous. Let's get on with our work. Thank you. 
for I'm sure you would not practice on my inexperience. I wish to do the right thing, and if, I say if, you truly are a fine woman, your age shall be no obstacle to our union. Mark, surely I hear voices. Who could venture to approach our all but inaccessible bed? Oh, it's, it's the Coast Guard. No, I'm it sure. sound like the Coast Guard. Oh, I'm sure it's the Coast Guard there. By all that's marvellous, a baby of beautiful maiden. Oh, lost, lost. <laughs> how lovely, how surpassingly lovely is the plainest of them. What grace, what delicacy, what... Refinement. Oh, false one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, deceived me. You told me you were fair as gold. And master am I not so. And now I see you're plain and old. I'm sure I'm not a joke so. Upon my innocence you play. I'm not the one to block so. Your face is lined, your hair is grey. It's gradually got so. <laughs> they did the small man to deceive me. I would trust and so. Master, master, do not leave me.
played by quite as keen a sense of duty. For shame, for shame, for shame. Thank you. 
but yesterday, tomorrow we pay for again. I hear the country wants some rain. If people say I know the fine, then we shall have a more true. Tomorrow we pay for again. I hear the country wants some rain. If people say I know the fine, then we shall have a more true. Like tomorrow we pay for again. I hear the country wants some rain.
now I'm Vedic history, King Arthur's and Sir Caradoc. I answer hard acrostics, I have a pretty taste of paradox. I quote in elegiacs all the crimes of Helio Gabalus. In conics, I can floor peculiarities parabolous. I can tell and doubt of Raphael's and Jared Dowson's Ophanies. I know the cracking chorus from the front of Aristophanes. Can you do not? <laughs> An orphan. 
Oh, 
relieve my father's sorrow. What? <laughs> Can't you cheer him up? Oh, I will try, dear Mabel, but why does he sit night after night in this draughty old ruin? Why do I sit here? Oh, Frederick, oh, Frederick, in order to escape from the pirate's clutches, I describe myself as an orphan. And heaven help me, I'm no orphan. I, I come here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for having brought this honour on a family of Scutcheon. But you forget, sir, you only bought the property a year ago and the stucco in your baronial hall is scarcely dry. In this chapel are ancestors, Frederick, you cannot deny that. With the estate, I bought the chapel and its contents. I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are, and I shudder to think that their descendants by purchase, if I may so describe myself, should have brought this grace upon what, I have no doubt, was an unstained discussion. Be comforted. Had you not acted as you did, these reckless men would assuredly have called in the nearest clergyman and have married your large family on the spot. Oh, I thank you for your proper <coughs> solace, Frederick, but it is unavailing. I... Well, I assure you, Frederick, that such is the anguish and remorse that I feel at the abominable falsehood with which I escape these easily deluded pirates. that I would go to their simple-minded chief this very night and confess all. And did I not fear that the consequence would be most disastrous to myself? <laughs> <laughs> at, at what time does your expedition march against these <coughs> scoundrels? At eleven. And before twelve, I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with the pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Uh, <coughs> are your devoted followers at hand? Uh, they are. They only wait my orders. Then, for rhetoric, let your escort, lion-hearted, be summoned to receive a general's blessing ere they depart upon their dread adventure. Dear sir, they come. <laughs> Oh, 
I don't know who. Most likely the astronomer royal has decided that although for such a beastly month as February, 28 days is a rule of plenty. One year in every four, these days shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised to were owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. You are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, May. having been born in Libya on the 29th of February. And so, by a simple arithmetical process, you'll easily discover that although you have lived for 21 years, yet if we go by birthdays, you're only five and a little bit over. <laughs>
breaks my heart to betray the honoured father of the girl that I adore. Break it. But as your apprentice, I have no alternative. None. It is my duty. Yes, yes, your duty. Tell you that General Stanley is no, no, yes, yes. no, yes, yes. no. no. When you say orphan, you mean orphan someone who has lost his parents? Or orphan frequently? Someone who has lost his parents. And more than that. He never was mad. You mean to say that in order to save his contemptible life, he dared to practice on a credulous simplicity? Our revenge shall be swift. We shall go and collect our band and attack to Morden Castle this very night. But stay. Not a word. He is doomed! Away, away, ere I expire, I find my duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with anguish dark, it strikes me to the core, away, away.
1940, I of age shall be, of then return I claim you, I declare it. It seems so long. Swear that till then you will be true to me. Thank <laughs> you. 
quenches sweet and favors all our dealings with courage rare and resolution manly for death prepare unhappy General Stanley. Is it for time and shriek one man the guilt? No! 
Austria provided with unusual facility to change piratic crime for dignified respectability. Combined, I needn't say, with the unparalleled felicity of what we have been longing for, unbounded domesticity. Tomorrow morning, Manny, we shall quickly be personified. Like many other couples conjugally matrimonified. And it shall be accomplished by a doctor of divinity who happily resides in the immediate vicinity. 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 For my military knowledge, though I'm flaky and adventury, has only been brought down to the beginning of the century. But still in getting off my daughter's age, or nine or ten or more, I show myself the model of a modern major general. But still in getting off his daughter's age, or nine or ten or more, I show myself the model of a modern major general. Thank you.